Let's talk about organic chemistry, which is the chemistry of compounds containing carbon. The next simplest thing we can do is add one other element. We'll add hydrogen, and we'll talk about hydrocarbons. And there will be three classifications of those that we'll generally talk about. Let's first talk about saturated hydrocarbons. There are only single bonds between carbon atoms. And an example would be butane. And we will soon see that bu at beginning means four carbons, that is. So we've got four carbons. Generally, we put them in a line. Um, there are other things we can do, but let's start with that. And then what you want to do to figure out the formula of butane is add hydrogens so that each carbon has four bonds. This end carbon had one bond to another carbon, so we add three hydrogens. The next one had, already has two bonds to other carbons, so we add two more. Similarly, two more, and then three on the end. And if you count up your carbons, of course, we have four. If you count up your hydrogens, you'll find that there are 10. C4H10 is the formula for butane. The A-N-E ending means that there are all single bonds between carbons. And in general, they're called alkanes um, when they're all carbons. And so pentane would be five carbons. A-N-E ending means all connected with single bonds. And the alkanes in general have the formula C N H. 2n plus 2. So if you see a formula that follows that pattern, it is an alkane. And I've got here, and let's see, on take number 9,000. Oh, there we go, if I can get this right. This is a modeling kit version of um, butane. You can see it's got the four carbons. It's actually in a tetrahedral geometry, so we are showing geometry or approximately tetrahedral geometry. Um, and you can see each of the hydrogens. You'll note that in modeling kits, carbon-carbon bonds are longer than carbon-hydrogen bonds, and hydrogens are smaller than carbons. There we go. Hydrogens are smaller than carbons. And the modeling kits are not perfect, but they do generally catch these parts of models anyway. Um, and what I will say is that putting these hydrogens in and taking them out is not that much fun. And so generally we don't do it, but we'll do it the first time. Uh, there's a special tool in the kit that is used. It's called a hydrogen picker. And what it does is it's specifically to take these carbon hydrogen, these little tiny carbon hydrogen bonds out. The other bonds are much easier to do. So anyway, there's your hydrogen picker and I will uh, eventually pick off all of these. And that is butane. Unsaturated hydrocarbons contain double uh, and or triple bonds as we'll see, but just generally double or triple bonds. They are unsaturated as opposed to saturated well, the saturated ones are saturated with hydrogens. There's as many hydrogens as possible. Whereas the unsaturated hydrocarbons have some of the hydrogens replaced by the double or triple bonds. You can see that sort of in the formula. And just as an example, which we will not have to name, we'll put this compound down again with four carbons, but now with a one double and one triple bond. Remember, a double bond is two pairs of shared electrons. And then for the carbon on the left, you can see that it has two bonds to the next carbon. So it only needs two more H's. And you can put those H's anywhere. Uh, I just put them there because there was more space maybe than up above. I don't know. Because um, uh, these are Lewis structures, and Lewis structures don't necessarily show shape. The next carbon has uh, three bonds to other carbon, so we'll add one H. The next carbon already has four bonds, and then the final carbon has three bonds, so we'll add one H as well. 
um, to that one. And now you can see that with these, you get a formula of C4H4. And we won't have you memorize patterns for the formulas for double and triple bond containing things. But what you will know is if it's got four carbons and it's got 10 hydrogens, then it's an alkane. And if it's got less hydrogens, there must be something else going on, most likely with double and or triple bonds to figure out. And that's going way back to the beginning of first semester general chemistry when you did a variety of molecular and empirical formula type problems, those were compounds that had some double, triple, et cetera, bonds in them. Uh, what else did I want to show? Oh, I wanted to show you this compound with my modeling kit. See if we can change our views here. Ah, and there's a little fly. Now uh, here on the modeling kit is a double bond. And you can see the kit comes with these longer bonds. And um, it's not perfect. Uh, maybe it is actually. So I forgot to check, but if you'd use all purple ones, then maybe it's okay. Um, because now what it should happen is the single bond between two carbons is longer than a double bond, which it appears to be here. And then a double bond is longer than a triple bond. And just so you know, this triple bond was kind of tough to make. I had to sort of attach it and then it sort of fell apart. And then I sort of bent these so that there's all three of them there. And it doesn't accurately reflect what's going on with the sigma and pi bonds for the double and triple bond. But in general, you can see that the single bond does rotate. So that's one that this model set catches. The double bond, eh, eh, it doesn't rotate. And the triple bond, well, once you get a pi bond, at least one pi bond, it's not gonna rotate, but the triple bond doesn't rotate either. So the model, while not perfect, does catch that aspect of um, the bond. So single bonds rotate, double and triple bonds don't. And there are one, two, three, four uh, places for hydrogens here. I have chosen to not put them in because they're hard to take apart and nobody cares about hydrogens anyway, especially if they're attached to carbon. More or less, anyway. Mas or menos? We or no? Uh, aromatic hydrocarbons contain one or more benzene rings. Um, let's see if I can squinch this in here. A benzene ring has six carbons, and so it's going to be one double bond C, single bond C, double bond C, single bond C, double bond C. Yeah, that's six carbons. So every other bond is single, every other bond is double. You can see that every single carbon in this has three bonds. So each of these carbons has one hydrogen to attach to it. And because of the double, single, double, single uh, nature of the double bonds, so every other, so every carbon actually participates in a pi bond. Um, there's a couple other representations of this. Uh, one of them is going to be just one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, a six sided structure with three single and three double bonds. This is a line bond structure, which uh, you're going to see again. You'll also see a six sided ring with just a circle in the middle. That is meant to convey that these three pi bonds here actually are uh, moving around. Um, and that's partially what we, or that is what we mean by aromatic is those, uh, well, they, they oftentimes are fragrant, but um, there's uh, a freedom of movement of those pi electrons around the ring. A um, couple other things, we've got C6H6 as the formula for benzene. And uh, I wanted to cover one other aspect, which is just um, how do we do uh, formulas that we might call 
um, condensed structural formulas. Let's go back to butane for this. And we can see that this group on the end is a CH3. Then we have a CH2, a CH2, and then a CH3. You'll see this sometimes. You'll also see, and I'll put this up here, CH3, CH2, 2, which means there's two of them. And I shall move my little picture there. And then a CH3. And that's, again, another shorthand way for denoting what the structures are in a molecule without actually drawing out the full of a structure. Down here, we might get CH2, CH, C, CH, where the hint that we don't have all those H's in there will tell us how to reconstruct the molecule with double and triple bonds in it. And then there really is no other shorter way of denoting a benzene ring right now. More about saturated hydrocarbons. Let me see if I can move my little head up there. So uh, you do have to memorize all these. meaning that one carbon is meth for methane, eth, pro, bu, pent for one, two, three, four, and five carbons. We've got our Lewis structures there, our condensed formula that we were just talking about, our boiling points, and uh, some uses of them in their phases. Uh, my favorite one being propane because it is used in my barbecue gas grill, uh, although mm, maybe as we approach winter while I'm recording this, natural gas for my heater is just a close second. You do have to know all the way till 10, but luckily the numbers are something that perhaps is somewhat familiar. Hex is six. The N in each of these just means that all the carbons are in a row. So uh, uh, a row of six or a string of six. So that's what N and N actually stands for normal or ordinary, that kind of normal sense. Um, and you can see some of the uses. You can see that some of them are gas. These are all liquids. And specifically, as you get to eight, nine, and 10, they're mostly used for gasoline. I think that's all I wanted to say for that. Yep. Now let's go through skeletal or line bond structures. Skeletal or line bond structures are something that I know I talk about in my first semester general chemistry class, but not everybody does. So you're writing out, um, or when writing out even the condensed formula, uh, it can become burdensome because of the size of some of the molecules. So we will use uh, skeletal or line bond structures. I tend to call them skeletal structures. And the guidelines here are each bond is re represented by a line. The end of each line is shown, uh, of each line shown is assumed to be a carbon atom. Each carbon atom must have four bonds. Any bonds not shown are assumed to be carbon hydrogen bonds because carbon atoms will not have lone pairs unless we show it, but we won't in this class. Maybe for those of you taking organic chemistry, you will eventually see that. Halogens, two oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen atoms require a full octet. They have less than a full octet. They fill the octet with lone pairs that are oftentimes not shown. And uh, one that I don't think necessarily fits the guidelines, but that is helpful practically, is that hydrogen atoms attached to non-carbon elements are typically shown. Hydrogen atoms attached to non-carbon atoms are shown generally, right? And everybody has their own way of doing skeletal or line bond structures. Um, so you may, but generally we do show them. Some examples, um, well, let's start with um, butane. 
uh, and we'll call it n-butane because it'll have all four carbons in a row. It's the same molecule we've already done. I took off one of the hydrogens there, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw the carbons. We are going to draw them in approximately a zigzag structure. So one, two, three, four. That is a skeletal line bond structure for butane. You can draw all kinds of crazy things here. Uh, you could draw one, two, three, four, five, double bond O, OH, NH2, if you will. And what you could do is you could put this back together as uh, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And on the second carbon, you're going to have an N bonded to two hydrogens. Nitrogen, by the way, does typically have three bonds and a pair of electrons. So if we're drawing a Lewis structure with all bonds and all electrons, we will show them. I've got a carbon here with one other bond, so that's a CH3. I've got a carbon here with two other bonds, again here, again here, and then at the end, I've got a double bond O, OH, which hopefully we recognize as a acid, weak acid group. And then oxygens typically have two pairs of non-bonding or lone electron pairs as well. Um, I think that's mostly what we want to do. You could do this. Oh, we won't do that yet. Sorry. We'll save that for later.